counterfeiting of food, a centuries-old story. Today we will take a long journey into the dark ages of unsafe food, when the sophistication of food, from bread to wine to sweets, was a common practice, and food fraud was starting to grow strongly, hand in hand, with the development of trade. Periodically, the newspapers give news of counterfeit foods, cheeses, sausages, and even wines. But these are not real fake foods, but labels. The gorgonzola, made in Denmark, or the pata negra, packaged in New Zealand, are not real gorgonzola, and respectively pata negra, but they are, nevertheless, always good cheeses and cured meats, healthy and tasty. In the past, however, the counterfeiting of food was a real act of deception, although there were very severe laws and punishments. Among the most authoritative and dated historical sources, there is certainly the Bible which in the Book of Kings reports an episode that occurred during a famine in the days of Elisha. On that occasion, in fact, someone had mistakenly collected some strange wild pumpkins, which were actually poisonous fruits, and had sliced them in the soup. For fear of intoxication, the children of the prophets stopped eating but Elisha miraculously prevented the dish from being thrown away. Ancient Egypt was also at the forefront from this point of view, if it is true that, as historical documents cite, at the time of the pharaohs, slaughtered meats were certified with bubbles that attested to their edibility that the issue was particularly felt is also given by the fact that those who showed themselves to be recidivists in engaging in scams were even sentenced to death. A similar fate was attributed in India as early as the 4th century BC to those who, exposing the wheat for sale, tried to deceive the buyer by placing in the visible part a layer of good quality product to hide a bad underlying grain. The penalties inflicted were of a physical nature, confirming that this type of offence was considered a very serious thing. The ancient Greeks, also sensitive to the problem, had promulgated rules for the prevention of food crimes. In Athens, health brigades, who were given the task of controlling trade activities, roamed the markets, paying particular attention to wine. Often, in fact, the product was treated with specific substances perhaps in order to pass off a simple novel as a vintage wine. The Romans were no less. Pliny the Elder, for example, gave ample space in his Naturalis Historia to the most frequent frauds in that historical moment, underlining the subterfuges used in the sale of spices and some drinks. He described the features of the bakers who added a kind of talc to the flour that made it much heavier. Yet Roman law contemplated specific rules and in some cases a separate discipline for products that required particular protection as well as very severe penalties provided for those who polluted the aqueducts. History from then to the present day shows continuous traces of the commitment of governments so that in terms of food, one thing was not sold for another or that the product was sold in a good state of conservation, precisely so that it would not cause damage to health. We discover that adulteration and fraud in commerce dominated to a surprising degree already in the Middle Ages.
In France, between 1200 and 1400, edicts and ordinances multiplied against the evil fraudsters who marketed adulterated meats and beer obtained with mixtures of wild berries. While in Germany, first the Emperor Frederick III and then the Emperor Maximilian issued harsh measures against the first wine falsifiers. In Italy, on the other hand, the most counterfeit food is bread. Between 1300 and 1600, many bakers were prosecuted because they made this food with flowers coming from mouldy grains and containing ergot mycotoxins, whose presence caused nervous disorders, often of a collective type. In addition, around 1,500 various butchers were reported in several parts of Italy who served their customers with the meat of animals that had died of diseases, the effects of which on the people who unfortunately consumed them were devastating. Food counterfeiting increases with the development of technological knowledge. Between the 17th and 18th centuries, alongside the discovery of new fraudulent practices concerning wine, clarified with eating glass and endowed with a brighter colour and less harshness by adding litharge, some particularly risky manipulations of the oil caused a huge sensation. This product was made by mixing poppy oil also known as clove oil, to the pressing of the olives. In France, in the 15th and 16th centuries, what the law defined as foods unworthy to enter the human body were banned and severe regulations were introduced for those who defrauded with bread and wine. Experiences such as that of the cat served at the table for hair or the donkey for chamois were the order of the day in the ancient taverns, where there was not even a lack of watered wine. Sweets were also victims of dangerous sophistication. The colours used by painters were often used in confectionery. We're talking about harmful substances such as gomu gutter, copper blue, co cobalt, and ash and lead lime. In the 1800s, with the intensification of trade and in the face of a growing demand for food, sellers increasingly resorted to commercial fraud. In the early 1800s, food fraud was so widespread that the chemist Frederick Acum wrote a famous booklet on the adulteration of food with the subtitle, Death in the Pot. In particular, around 1820, a real shock hit the United Kingdom. It turns out that the iridescent shades of London sweets were made from copper and lead salt. In an 1855 cartoon which appeared in the English satirical weekly Punch, a little girl who appeared went into a grocery store and made this request, Mum asks for a pound of tea of the best quality to kill the mice, and half a pound of chocolate to exterminate the cockroaches. But all this is still little if we consider that in the United States at the same time, the suppliers of milk to the dairies in the New York area were involved in a scandal because they fed the cattle with the waste from the distilleries. And why, as if that wasn't enough, the product was stretched with water and plaster. The Americans were involved shortly after in another unfortunate event. During the Cuban War in 1898, cans of formalin flavoured meat were distributed to the US Expeditionary Force, the effects of which on the health of the unfortunate poor who had ingested it can be well imagined. A bleak picture of the food wholesale trade in the French capital was exhibited in 1873 in Emile Zola's book, The Belly of Paris. 
In 1898, the aforementioned scandal of spoiled meat cans distributed to the US Expeditionary Force during the Cuban War prompted the journalist Upton Sinclair to carry out an investigation into the slaughtering and meat industry, which had its capital in Chicago, from which it was born the novel Investigation the Jungle. During the two world wars, fraud increased due to the scarcity of food, which led speculators to refine food. The milk was thus diluted with water, and the bread was made with cheap flours, or with the addition of chalk powder. In the 1950s, the fraud involved olive oil. Sophisticated with tea oil or synthetic oil, the pasta was produced with soft wheat flour with the addition of Istin glass for sealing during cooking. The wine was added with sugars to increase its alcohol content. In the second half of the 20th century, fake food took on new dimensions, mainly in two directions. The first is that the sophistication has extended along the entire production chain from the field to the table. The second is that of imitating high quality products replaced with generic and lower quality foods, that is agro-piracy. In the 1980s, the methanol wine scandal broke out with many people intoxicated and some deaths, followed by the fraudulent use of anabolics in cattle farms to increase their performances with consequent repercussions on the meat sector. The use of synthetic red dyes in chili to make it brighter in colour, the artificial treatment of fresh tuna with carbon monoxide, CO, to make it cherry red, unlike its natural colour, deep red. The use of sulphites or nitrates as stabilisers of the red colour of minced meat. In 2009, the intoxication of 53,000 Chinese children who drank milk powder adulterated with melamine. Counterfeiting, however, is only one aspect of fake foods. There are two other categories, adulteration and sophistication. But we will talk about these in another episode.